Hello again. It is now a couple days later. It is now, in fact, the 29th of December 2014. And today we're actually going to put this part to the test. First of all, I want to see if it works at all. And second of all, I want to test whether uh, it will behave properly under Windows. But first, I want to test if the components are stable at all in the first place, so I will be using Hybrid's boot CD. Also, I received a shitload of DDR2 RAM today. It is all pretty much for testing purposes. So yeah, got, a, got some DDR2 right here. Two 512 modules and all the rest of these are one gig. And these are two gigabyte modules. So yeah, so these are the two gigabyte modules, let's see if we can get these in on camera, there we go, we're gonna have to use the red slots, for it to run dual channel mode. And that was a very interesting blooper, in fact. But uh, yeah, the modules are now installed. I'm not going to edit that out, by the way. So now we're going to go and uh, take a look at the test bed and everything that we're going to use to test this board out. Let's get to it. Okay, then, this is the test setup pretty much. This is an MS Tech MSN750 VAL power supply, 750 watts. This is the A bit motherboard, the Fatality FP IN9 SLI. And uh, this is just a random CD ROM drive, it's not even a DVD drive. But we only need a, a CD ROM drive for high runs to work. So it's connected through IDE, so I didn't have to find a SATA drive for that. No hard drive connected at the moment. This is that 9300GS card. There we go. I need a little push there. So now it's in the slot properly. The 8 pin CPU power is connected. The auxiliary 4 pin is not because this power supply only has one lead with Molex connectors and I needed it for this drive. If it turns out that it doesn't work, I will take um, another crack at it. Off, off camera, of course, to see if that fixes it, but uh, I'm not too scared. So what I'm going to do now is going to switch off the camera light and hit the power button here on the board, and we'll see if something happens on the on the screen, actually. So, uh, yeah. I'll make sure we have a camera angle to work with, and then we will continue. This is, in fact, take two of the boot up process because it turned out that uh, the CPU cooler for some reason came loose and it was overheating like hell so we're just going to do this again so we're going into the BIOS now date and time is all properly set all that good stuff we're going to look at the PC health status this time though Ah, yes, the CPU temperature is now 38, 39 degrees. That's definitely more tolerable than the 50 degrees I got earlier. Don't know why, but some of the push pins actually didn't go through all the way. It was mounted properly the last time I actually used the board, so at, at least when I handled it. But uh, that's been corrected. Temperature seems stable now, which is good. That means that it is now officially um, ready for service. It's actually going to do a reboot now. And boot from the Hiren's boot CD. A couple of things we can do here. We can boot all various kinds of partitions. 
but we are going to boot mini windows xp because there is no hard drive connected at the moment and i don't have a dvd drive handy at the moment either so so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to run mini XP, run some tools in there, and then we should be good, and we should be able to, uh, you know, see whether the thing is stable or not. The only thing that I really noticed, and it was in the first take really for this part of the video, is that um, the RAM, for some reason, uh, would not run at 1.8 or was, was set to 1.85 volts by default and I just I just don't know why because this RAM is rated at 1.8 volts so not 1.85 so yeah maybe that's why it wouldn't boot at the first uh, first go that I had with it it also said like uh, CMOS checks some bad so I switched the batteries around and it sort of works again it keeps time, it keeps the settings so I'm happy with that I just wish that my mother wouldn't have actually thrown away all of my CMOS batteries because I bought a whole stack of them not too long ago for some reason my USB keyboard started working again mouse still doesn't so that's just weird now that's a little bit uh, a little bit of a bug that I've uh, come across so far So, what are we going to do? Well, let's see. Yeah, we can play Solitaire. Mm-hmm. That's useful. No, it's not. Um, yeah, first of all, let's see if that works. There we go. 3.25 gigabytes of RAM, well that's to be expected I guess. Let's head into device manager. Let's see RAM drive connected. Apple keyboard, that is correct. And other than that we can't really see anything. So that's that. Uh, oh, whoops. Didn't actually notice that I did that, but uh, I was going to boot menu here. Let's see. We don't want any of that. Let's take a look at what kind of CPU you're running here. Let's run CPU Z. Okay, there we go, socket 775, 2 megs of cache, 1.86 gigahertz, dual core. Okay, it's actually the NVIDIA 650i SLI chipset, that's good. Probably needs a BIOS update though, because <laughs> seeing that the BIOS is dated to uh, the 17th of December 2007, that's kind of old. Running dual challenge is fine though. Apparently this is DDR2-800, got 4 gigs of it. This is the graphics card, the G98, otherwise known as the NVIDIA GeForce 9300 GS. And I actually fucked up there, so let's try this again. Let's see, testing. Prime 95 right there. Ah, specky. Well, that's very useful. Does not work in Mini XP, apparently. Now, why did they include it anyway? But, okay, anyway. Tweakers, no. We want some proper testing here. Bart stuff test. Sounds good. Doesn't look good. In that case, we'll just uh, use SNM stress tests. Let's 
Because of the overheating issue earlier, I'm kind of curious whether uh, the CPU will behave better this time. Let's see, we're now running at 54 degrees. That's definitely miles better than what I had earlier. Because it would be running at the uh, upper 70s at this point already. We're going to give it a proper stress testing here. We're going to keep an eye on the temps here. Given that this is a stock cooler and a very early Core 2 Duo CPU, I'm expecting the temps to be, well, as long as they stay under 65, I'm happy. Just going to do a quick uh, little test here to see how fast these temps are actually rising. This is a very, very um, unnatural situation because it's just pretty much a burn-in test. Seems to handle it just fine so far. We haven't even reached the 58 degrees just yet. There we go, 58. That's the CPU level 1 test. Yeah, it's handling this just fine. That's good to know. And let's see if the temps are actually dropping now properly. 55. Speed step is not working here, so of course the temperatures will not be as low as they could be. And we're back at 55 where we started. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Okay, I know enough. This board will be uh, installed in a motherboard. This board will be installed in the motherboard. Yeah, that's great. This board will be installed in the case uh, as soon as I can, as soon as I get the cases in. And uh, yeah, it will be sold on. I'll just uh, get a fresh copy of Windows 7, because Windows 8 is for pussies. And then we will be good to go. We can sell it on for profit, and uh, yeah should be great I think I'll sell it with the uh, with the uh, with the GeForce 9300 it does not appear to be all that noisy anymore as it used to be so that's very good so yeah that's the end of the video well the take two of it I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video I thank you all for watching and have a wonderful 2015